okay so in the earlier lecture we saw that the meisner effect which is the screening of dc or ac magnetic fields from within the interior of the superconductor is described by the london's equation curl of j where j are the dc could be dc or it, uh, if you write dots on it then it is the ac but uh, this also describes the dc fields so dc currents as well as dc magnetic fields are related by this equation and uh, it leads to this equation which is also the london's equation both of these are london's equation and we had seen that it causes it uh, it shows that there is a, a screening of the uh, magnetic fields dc magnetic fields from interior of the sample uh, magnetic field just penetrates up to lambda from the edges of the sample where lambda is the superconducting penetration depth now this london's equation uh, is also can be written in a more popular form uh, which i will write now and it has interpretations when you write it in this form which i will come to later uh, you know that b uh, is curl of the vector potential so if i write curl of j as minus 1 by lambda square curl of a bar from the london's equation then i can get a direct relation between j the shielding current density and the screening and the vector potential okay that the shielding currents are directly related to the vector potential okay these are the diamagnetic shielding currents diamagnetic shielding currents these are the diamagnetic shielding currents in a superconductor okay and uh, these are responsible for the perfect diamagnetic shielding for perfect diamagnetic shielding this is actually the maximum shielding current that can be generated we will see it shortly okay we will get an uh, uh, we will get some idea of this shielding current uh, in a little while however uh, let's continue the discussion of this uh, london's equation and um, uh, for that i will i would like to give you one problem uh, which is based on the london's equation which you can try and solve and that is a semi infinite 2d plate okay which is bounded on plus minus a along the x direction and is infinite along the z direction and this is applied a magnetic field okay so this is a superconducting plate uh, which is bounded between plus and minus a along the x direction and is infinite along the plus minus z direction and you apply a magnetic field from outside to this sheet okay and uh, solve the maxwell's equation for it okay it's almost the same for the example that i had done okay you just have to write down what is the general solution of a two uh, for the second order differential equation that we had written down you just write the general solution and there are two constants which you will have to solve by using two boundary conditions one is the boundary condition let's say at x equal to a and the other boundary condition you will use is that the magnetic field b at x equal to zero is zero that means at the center of the plate the magnetic field at the center of the plate this is one boundary condition and the second boundary condition is that b at x equal to plus minus a is equal to b naught this is the second boundary condition and with that you can actually solve uh, for the two uh, unknowns which are there in the general solution of the second order differential equation which you will write for this from the london's equation and then you can show that the magnetic field distribution for this will be written as the magnetic field distribution for this situation will be written as b of x will be b naught by cosine hyperbolic a by lambda sin hyperbolic x by lambda b 
this is the magnetic field. The magnetic field depends on x direction. It is applied along the z direction, but the magnitude of it actually varies along the x direction, which is along the plate. Okay, and it decays down by a distance lambda. So one can show this. Okay, uh, using the Maxwell's equation, and I would like to like you to work it out. So if I want to plot this, so let us try and plot this expression. So if I try and plot this. the magnetic field so b is the magnetic field along the x direction and uh, these are the plus minus these are the boundaries at plus minus a minus a and plus a at these two points and the magnetic field at plus minus a outside is b0 and what happens is that as you enter into the sample the magnetic field will be shielded out it will be zero at the corners it will be zero at the center and it will i have not drawn it too well but basically these the distance up to which it is going to penetrate from the edges of the sample is going to be lambda this is going to be lambda and in the center of the film it will be zero in the center of the film it will be zero here it will be b naught this value will be b naught it will be zero at the center the magnetic field will be zero at the center and this will be the behavior of the magnetic field okay for this particular problem now another interesting thing that you can do is find out what is happening with the currents okay and that will give you an understanding of wh why is the magnetic field actually going to zero so what you can do is that uh, you can find out the current from your maxwell's equation which is that the current distribution j is nothing else but 1 by mu naught curl of b and of course this you can write it as i j k i cap dou by dou x dou by dou y and dou by dou z and here you will have your magnetic field of course the magnetic field is only along the z direction so that this term will come here so this is your bx term which you have already found out and from here you can find out what is the current distribution just by using the maxwell's equation and uh, i will leave that for you to find out but let me plot let me sketch the magnetic field distribution the current distribution which is there you will find that the current is actually flowing along the y direction okay because these are shielding currents so they will actually flow into the y direction okay and uh, once you find out the current distribution let me sketch out the current distribution so it just takes a little while for it to respond i'm not sure why this is taking a little time but anyway let me just go ahead and select it these are the two edges this is minus a and plus a and let me draw the current distribution in green the current distribution will be
this will be the current distribution where the currents are flowing in a distance of lambda around the edges of the film. So these are shielding currents, these are nothing else. So this is the current density J. Okay, this is the plot of the current density A. Why once you find this out and if you sketch it and if you plot it, you will find that how much is the current flowing along the edges. And um, so a lot of this calculation is I leave it to you, but this is very simple calculation. But um, what I would like to do is to discuss the physics of it. So you will see that the currents on the two edges are flowing in the opposite direction as you saw earlier that you get this current on the two edges uh, from the calculation you can see that the current is flowing in the positive and negative direction. So let me just show that for you. So you can see that the current is changing sign on the two edges. The current uh, at the two edges has changed sign and it is flowing within a distance lambda from the edges. So schematically what it means is that uh, if you consider this as a plate which has extended into the y direction then on the two faces there are these shielding currents which are flowing on the edges of these two faces and these shielding currents are flowing in such a way so that it actually screens out the external magnetic field from interior of the sample. These shielding currents, you have these shielding currents which are flowing on the two edges. You have the shielding currents which are flowing on the two edges of this plate and these shielding currents actually screen the external magnetic field from entering into the interior of the sample. So it is not perfect uh, 2D plate, we just consider it that it is infinite along the y direction and also infinite along the x direction but it is limited along the uh, x direction. It is infinite along the z direction and it is also infinite along the y direction. So it's like an infinite plate of finite thickness uh, of 2a which is along the x direction and it is infinite along the y direction as well as infinite along the z direction and when you apply a magnetic field from outside then this magnetic field is screened out from the interior of the superconductor by the shielding currents which are circulating on the edges of the superconductor and as you can see that these fields uh, the current density j uh, will be some derivative of x the current density will be some derivative of x so the j the current density j magnitude wise will be proportional to b naught by lambda whatever is the external field that you applied it will be of that order it will be going as b naught by lambda so that will be the typical uh, value of the shielding current. This is the shielding current. These are the diamagnetic shielding currents and these shielding currents will be extending up to a distance of lambda from the edges of the superconductor. So within a thickness of lambda from the edge of the superconductor which is of the order of few hundreds of nanometers you will have small magnetic field which will enter into the superconductor but which very soon will get screened out as you can see in this in the center of the superconductor there is no magnetic field and on the edges up to a distance lambda you have these shielding currents positive and negative shielding currents which are flowing which are screening the superconductor from the external magnetic field so this gives you the interpretation of what is going on in a superconductor and these are the diamagnetic shielding currents in a superconductor which are flowing over a distance lambda from the edges of the superconductor.
Now we have been saying that in a superconductor there are these strong diamagnetic shielding currents which are set up which actually screen the interior of the superconductor from the uh, magnetic field. So whatever magnetic field you apply the strong shielding currents cause the magnetic field to die out within the uh, edge of the sample and then within the, within the superconductor it is zero. So this gives rise to the lambda penetration depth whether it is DC or AC you will have this strong shielding current at the edge which is of this order. Lambda is B0 is the strength of the magnetic field at the a boundary of the superconductor by lambda and this is the value at x equal to 0. So this is a roughly an estimate of the value of the current at the uh, shielding current, the screening current which actually causes the magnetic field to decay out inside the sample. Uh, this is the value of the shielding current. Now whether it is an AC or whether it is a DC it will be roughly of this order, we are considering it as a DC case. Uh, now how large is this current? So let us try and get an estimate and to estimate this let us compare it with a normal conductor. Now in a normal conductor if you apply a DC field of course the shielding currents is will be initially set up whenever you apply the field to the super to the conductor uh, but because of uh, finite conductivity or resistivity these currents will immediately die out. They will dissipate inside the metal and very soon they will be dying out. The only way to have a sustained current uh, these shielding currents inside the normal metal is to apply a AC field to the metal. So then these diamagnetic shielding currents will be continuously be present because there is a screening depth it will try to screen this AC field as we have already seen that any normal metal will try to screen the AC field up to the skin depth okay and this will actually cause the AC field to decay inside the metal and that is what is shown here okay. Uh, if you recall that the magnetic field that we had solved uh, the behavior of the AC field that we had solved was of this form namely it will have uh, along the x direction there will be a screening of the amplitude of this AC field it will decay over a distance which is delta which is the skin depth and uh, it is propagating uh, along the x direction with a time varying uh, behavior. And uh, let us consider that to compare with the AC case to compare with the DC case uh, that we have here we consider a low frequency let us say it is a 1 hertz uh, AC field that we are applying. Uh, for approximately okay and so that we can compare with the superconducting case. Now just as before we had done for the superconductor if you take curl uh, of the current density uh, is equal to 1 by mu naught of B and since we are considering very low frequency the omega of the system is very low so the displacement current can be neglected namely the additional term which exists here because of dE by dt which is a displacement current we neglect that because we are looking at very low frequencies. So the current density at the edge if you just look at this expression uh, you will just get again at the edge of the metal you will get a, a current a screening current which is of this order where B0 is the amplitude of the uh, magnetic field that you have applied divided by delta where delta is now the screening depth or the skin depth of the metal. So you, you have a normal metal with a finite conductivity, it is not infinite, it is a finite conductivity metal and on this side you have a superconductor, expressions are almost similar whereas in a metal you will have the skin depth, here you have the screening length or the uh, uh, you have the penetration depth. Now let us take a ratio of these current densities at x equal to 0 namely at the edge wherever it is maximum at the edge of the metal or the superconductor you just take a ratio of the current density in the metal to the current density in the superconductor. It is just a ratio of these two length scales assuming that the amplitude of the magnetic field is roughly similar okay and we are applying a low AC frequency. So then uh, you write down the expressions for lambda and delta and you will get this where omega, uh, the this is the conductivity the AC conductivity because you are applying an AC field. Um, now here you should recall your Drude's theory um, uh, and you can show that for very low AC frequencies of the order of 1 hertz uh, omega is much much less than the mean time interval the omega is not comparable to 1 over tau where tau is the mean time interval between the scattering 
events the time interval between two successive scattering so your ac conductivity is roughly the same as dc conductivity because for one hertz frequency omega tau is much much less than one okay so you can show that your uh, sigma ac conductivity is the same as the drude's dc conductivity which is n e square tau by m n is the density of the charged particles e is the charge or uh, is the charge tau is the time interval between two scattering events and m is the mass now if you put back here this into this expression you will get these cancellations and here you will land up with the square of jm by j is, is omega tau or that jm is of the order of square root of omega tau times js where omega is of the order of one hertz and tau is the time interval between two successive scattering experienced by the electron and this time interval tau is of the order of 10 raised to minus 14 seconds in a normal metal so if you put that here you can show that the shielding currents or the screening currents in a metal are 10 raised to minus 7 times the shielding currents in a superconductor so therefore the diamagnetic shielding currents which you get in a superconductor are far far larger than that in a metal they are almost 10 raised to 7 times larger than what you get in a metal in a metal you have very low shielding currents and therefore the diamagnetism that you get in a superconductor are far superior that is why you get perfect shielding you get perfect shielding in a superconductor because of very large perfect shielding in a superconductor because of very large diamagnetic shielding currents these are orders of magnitude larger than any good metal that you can have metals cannot show such large shielding currents and with such large shielding currents you get perfect diamagnetism namely j is equal to 1 by lambda square a this is your london's equation and this gives rise to perfect shielding in a superconductor the negative sign shows that these are screening currents shielding currents so that the external field is shielded out from the interior of the